Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is part two of my sexual assault story. And I'm refilming this because in the, the last one that I did do, I decided to delete because it became more about the conversation of what's right and wrong as far as pro-choice, pro-life, and about abortion itself that it kind of took away from what I was saying about my actual experience going through it. And since I am pro-choice and I expect people to respect my opinions and beliefs, I would like to do the same with others. So I'm not saying that if you are pro-life, then you're bad or wrong or anything like that. This is just my experience. What I actually went through, all of the steps, from how from everything and um you know there are a lot of myths about abortion there's a lot of misinformation out there and while i respect somebody else's opinions it only bothers me when people believe things that are factually not true um, for example, like the Planned Parenthood videos that came out like a couple years ago, it was proven that they were doctored. The people that made them got into legal trouble, but people still believe them. Um, abortion causes or, or increases your chance for breast cancer. It doesn't. That is a proven fact. So whether you want to believe in the facts or not, when you don't believe a fact, it becomes your opinion. Um, it doesn't make it not a fact anymore. And it's very, it's very disheartening to see so many extreme pro-life organizations put out such false and disgusting information that people will believe because it's on the internet, you know? And it really, that's the only part that irks me, you know? Um... Other than that, like, I, I understand why somebody would be pro-life. You know, if you don't agree with abortion, then don't have one. Um, I, you know, in, in cases of using it as a form of birth control, that doesn't happen often. And my experience working at this clinic that I got my abortion done at taught me a lot I mean, talk about, like, really thinking about walking in someone else's shoes and really empathizing with them. So to backtrack a little bit, after the assault, I went to the emergency room. And it was kind of odd because I figured that they would have given me some kind of a, like, morning after pill, like a Plan B. Now, at the time, I don't think it was called Plan B, but I know when I had missed a couple of pills whenever I was with my ex-boyfriend, they gave me, like, I had to take four pills, and then 12 hours later, take another four pills. And um, just so you know, Plan B is not an abortion pill. Um, if you're already pregnant, it does absolutely nothing. Um, so I was a little surprised that the nurse didn't give me anything like that. I told her, you know, oh my goodness, like, I think I missed one of my pills. And she basically said, oh, it'll be fine. But I heard her whisper to the other nurse, it's in God's hands now. As like, if I get pregnant, then that's God's plan for me. Instead of protecting me, you know, and that was really, really shitty because I did end up pregnant. Yes, you can become pregnant when you are raped because your body does not just shut down like some people think. Um, and that's what happened to me. Now, I was 18 at this point now, and I, I didn't know what I was doing with my life. I knew that I would likely resent having this baby. And it took a long time I mean, not a long time, but it, it was a lot of thinking that went into it. It wasn't like, oh, I don't want to be pregnant, boom. You know what I mean? There was a lot of thought behind it. And I was very early on to where I think that the cells were probably, I think she said like a little bit bigger than a pea um, or a lima bean, something like that. I was very early on. And um, 
So I, I made an appointment. Um, I was scheduled to have the procedure done at 10 a.m. Um, I was It was a Tuesday. I remember that. And I had to be there at 7. So going to this place, and it was not a Planned Parenthood. It was a reproductive um, health care facility, which also offers no. free prenatal vitamins, prenatal care, um, different types of screenings for things. It's not just an abortion clinic or anything like that but as i was walking to the door an older gentleman he was probably in his like early to late 60s yeah. he tried to tackle me and push me up against the wall sticking this picture in my face of a bloody baby and it was like I was I was shocked. It was like he came out of nowhere. You know, I didn't see a bunch of people outside like protesting or anything. He just was there and he was like cursing at me and stuff. And the police officer that was inside the clinic, there's like three different like security doors. She came out, got him away from me. I, you know, grabbed me and brought me in. Um, and it's kind of weird because if you're pro-life, like, why would you want to hurt somebody and like kind of fuck with their life. You know what I mean? I just don't understand it. Anyway, not the point. So um, it was really crazy because abortion is not cutting open a woman's stomach and taking out a baby. Um, so what you, what I had to do in my situation was I had to be there three hours early because I had to do um, a bunch of paperwork. Then I had to have um, like an hour of counseling and my mother came with me so I had an hour of counseling then she had about a half an hour and then we both had an hour after they explained the entire procedure to me um, in no way whatsoever was I coerced into uh, you know into doing it um, they laid out all the options as far as adoption and things like that and even um, offering information about certain organizations like certain things that are in place to help young mothers and they give you all of the information they don't just say oh yeah you better have this abortion you know it is not like that whatsoever so prior to the um, to the abortion you get a Valium and, I mean, you get blood work done and stuff like that, too. That all happens in the process of going to the counselor and filling out paperwork and everything. And they let you sit with the volume for about 25, 30 minutes. And you go into a room and don't, just as a disclaimer, this is not graphic. This is not, um, you know, if you're easily triggered, I don't think that you will be um, during this part um, because it isn't how people try to make you think it is. So um, you go into the room, you meet the doctor, um, the nurses, oh my God, are like so great because it's not an easy thing. It's super emotional. Um, and they give you a shot in your cervix and then they do a dnc which is essentially sucking out the cells with like a vacuum um not like a regular vacuum cleaner gross but i mean it's like a vacuum machine and it takes out the cells and that's what it is that's what it does that's what an abortion is um in most cases, you know, I know that some people say that all these Planned Parenthoods do, um, you know, like late term abortions and all this stuff. I mean, there are rare cases if a woman's life is at risk or the baby's life is at risk that there are maybe some places that even still offer that. I'm not even sure at this point um, because I know they close like so many clinics, but um it isn't cutting you open and taking out a baby that's screaming and bloody. And I mean, it's the people that protest this have graphic pictures of things like that on posters. And that's not what it is at all. So after the procedure, you have to wear like a big pad um, and you go and sit in a heated chair and they give you a cookie and a little bit of juice. 
and you sit for half an hour and then they take you to the bathroom and they see how much you're bleeding. Then you go back and you sit sometimes for another hour, 45 minutes. And if you're not bleeding, because there's a slight chance you could hemorrhage, um, if you're not bleeding, then you're free to go. And it feels like really bad period cramps for about 10 minutes and then it like kind of goes away. Um, it sounds... It sounds like it's not a big deal when you talk about how it actually is, but I mean, it is still a big deal. It's still an emotional thing. It's still a huge decision to make, and I don't regret it. I have been made to feel shame for it. Um, when I used to try to speak up for women and being like pro-choice, I would always have to start off with the assault. Because somehow that made people not as angry with me about having it done. But, I mean, I don't think that abortion is only okay whenever you are raped. Um, and, you know, when I was started to work at this place, I only worked there for a year. And, I mean, I think we did maybe two abortions. Um, a lot of it was STD stuff, you know. And no you know, this place didn't do mammograms either, like Planned Parenthood doesn't, but they give you like a prescription looking like paper so that you can get a free one. And um, that's always great if you don't have any money, you know, and um, but anyway, but I when I worked there, there was a case of this little girl um, beautiful little girl. She was 12 years old. I think it was even in the newspaper. Excuse me, I knew the story because I was working there. Um, her stepdad had been molesting her since she was four years old, and he was raping her, and she got pregnant. When she came through those doors, three older gentlemen tried to attack her. And I'm telling you, she's 12 years old, but she looked like she was nine. And, you know, and people would say, well, she should have the baby and just give it up for adoption then. Well, you know, when you're that age, especially 12 years old, having to carry a baby to term is emotionally and physically very, like, stressful, you know, and to be able to give up a baby like that at that age, I don't feel like it's up to anybody else to decide what someone wants to do with their own life. And that's how I feel about a lot of things. Um, if you're not you know, hurting other people and, you know, you're not, and you're not pushing your beliefs on everybody else. And if it's a religious based thing of why somebody is pro-life, then let God, God judge me. You know, you don't need to. Um, I, I respect everybody and their own beliefs. And I know that I'm saying this again, because I feel like I'm going to be like, really like get a lot of hate for this or something. I've been called a murderer before I've heard it all, but you know, I'm tired. I'm tired of feeling ashamed for it. And it's been like 17 years and I still feel that way when I start to talk about it. Like I am an awful human being, but I don't regret it. It doesn't mean that I didn't have emotions about it. You know, it, it didn't mean like it was taken lightly, you know, for me, not at all. Um, it's just that it was the best decision that I could make for myself at that time. And I'm glad that I made it. I'm very glad that I made it. I would have been linked to this piece of shit for the rest of my life. People say, oh, we're only, it would only be until the kid's 18. Well, it doesn't mean that when your kid is 18, it's not your kid anymore. Like, of course, you know, and who knows, just who knows how all of those things would work. But I'm glad that I did it. And I'm done. I don't feel, I, I, I'm, I'm done being made to feel like I should feel ashamed. And there are so many women out there that have had to make such a difficult decision. And it's getting harder and harder for them to be able to get these procedures done. But it's also becoming harder and harder for them to receive health care, to have um, contraceptives, you know, if if you don't want people to have unplanned, unwanted pregnancy, you should be advocating for insurance to cover birth control pills. You should be advocating for Planned Parenthoods, for STD screenings, for having birth control either free or super affordable. That's what helps, not, you know, trying 
to make it out to seem like if you have an abortion, they're just like cutting your stomach open and a full baby's coming out. Not to make people feel like it's murder. You know what I mean? Um, and, and I feel bad for a lot of women. I know women that wanted to have abortions, but their families were like, uh-uh, because they were super religious. And I know that they love their children, but there is that resentment there. There is that, well, I had to take responsibility, so should everybody else. Well, that sounds like you resent your decision. And I feel like everybody should be able to make their own personal choices in their own lives, you know? And so... That was, that was my experience. And, um, it, it doesn't cause depression. It doesn't cause suicide. It doesn't increase my risk for breast cancer. Those things are factually false. And so, you know, imagine that little girl, that little 12 year old that was walking in there getting almost attacked by these men. It almost makes me tear up now thinking about it. And um, she's just a little girl. She's just a little kid, you know. And the horror and the trauma that she had to go through and that she will go through for the rest of her life. Um, you can't sit there and tell me that you, you should be the one to force that person to have a baby. That's what it comes down to. I understand if you don't agree with it. I just don't think that you go as far as to push your own beliefs on other people to where it is made into a law that it cannot happen. And in places that have these crisis pregnancy centers, they're telling you false information. They're making you go through all a series of all of these nonsensical things so that it's too late for you to get an abortion. Because no, they usually don't perform late-term abortions and it's sad you know and and on another note too it's kind of weird that anybody would want to force somebody to have a baby if they can't take care of it financially for instance well you want them to be able to have the baby because you're anti-abortion but then you're also anti-programs that would help these women or these kids like snap and welfare and you know then that's a whole other issue that you don't want you know and i remember when um i saw on the news when they were taught they were taking i think it was in texas they had like a bus full of these immigrant children that were coming over here because they don't want to die in their own countries risking their lives to even come here. And most of them were like 15 and under. And they had this woman outside of this bus saying, not our kids, not our problem, wearing a fucking pro-life shirt. How pro-life is that? Not our kids, not our problem. How can you be both? You know, it's just I remember watching that. I was like, people can be really, really insane. And I understand if you totally disagree with my decision. Um, it's, it's easier to understand if you have the capability to have empathy for somebody and be like, okay, if I was in that situation, like really think about it. Not just be like, oh, whatever. You know, I wouldn't have done that. Um, and it's okay if you wouldn't have. Um, everybody's different, you know. And this was what was best for me and I don't regret it. Um, I, you know, after all of that, you know, I'm only left with some of the trauma from the assault, you know, and hopefully one day maybe that'll go away. I don't really know. But just so you know, the process of getting an abortion isn't what people make it out to be. And it's really, you know, three hours of counseling before, you know, and then you go to two counseling appointments after. At least that's what they did with me. So um, it really isn't what you may think it is. And I understand, like I said, if um, you are pro-life, I respect that and hopefully you can respect me for being pro-choice. But that was, that was my experience. And um, it felt pretty good to talk about this. Um, so thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, you know, just leave them down below. Love and hugs.